We're gonna get Renfrey now, and it's GG. Guys, ask and you shall receive. Quax is a fantastic card. Very grateful for this card in these times. You know what? That's fine because we got Renfrey. Yeah, check it out. We're going to consume False Siri. Absolute devastating counter. They're going to leave it there, right? Yes! 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 It's gonna happen, right? Um, whenever you play a crone, gain a charge? Yeah? Uh, maybe damage you? No, no, wait. We're gonna practice good etiquette. Otherwise, the card doesn't activate unless I place it this way. There you go. Oh! Good! Now we go She Who Knows. Oh! Good! Wow! Okay! We found value! Hey, what's up legends? Welcome back to another deck guide. Before we get into today's list, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do so now. My next objective is to reach 10,000 subscribers and I'd really appreciate your help and support in achieving that goal. For today, I've put together a Relics Tome deck. By Tome, I'm talking about Necromancer's Tome here. So, leader that we're utilizing is Force of Nature. With this order, we get to spawn and play Woodland Spirit. That's that 9 power token unit that you see there. It is a Relic itself, so it does have some synergy with some of the cards in this list. As far as when to use leader, I think it is best to use leader either round 2 or round 3. Stratagem that we're going to be utilizing is Crystal Skull. Boost an allied unit by 4 and give it fail. I have Crystal Skull in this deck to offer us some protection for our engines. In particular, we can target the Witch Apprentice and Self Eater with that stratagem. So what I'm going to do is run you through this list bottom up, explain how best to play each card, when to play it during a match, and then we're going to discuss how to execute the strategy for this deck. So to begin with, I do have Pella in this list. We have Pella in here as a tech against statuses. So on deep play, we get to purify any unit of our choice. And what we can do is use Pella to remove statuses such as poison and locks from our units. If the opponent has a defender status, we can remove that and even a resilience status. So use Pella as you need to. We've got double Archie Spore. Archie Spore is a Death Wish unit. The Death Wish ability is that you can summon all copies of this unit from your deck to this row. So because of the way this card works, we want to keep one of these copies in our deck at all times. We can play the other on the board. And the way we're going to look to activate the Death Wish for this card will be through the use of Brewess. And I suggest that we do this round one early on just to prioritize thinning and deck consistency for our list. We've got two Lesser Witches in this deck. So Lesser Witch has a really good interaction with Necromancer's Tomb. On deploy, this card spawns a base copy of self in your graveyard. Bonded, spawn a base copy of self on this row instead. In this case, I recommend we save both Lesser Witches to be played with Necromancer's Tome. Because of the interaction with Lesser Witch and Necromancer's Tome, what happens is that on deploy, uh, this card will play for 10 right away because of how that card works. So that's the best time to use these. We have Spores to offer us some control. Spores allows us to reset the power of a unit of our choice. This offers us some kind of a tall punish option. In some cases, could be really good against Karanthia, Golden Child, Frostless, Symbiosis List. Use this as you need to. 
at times we may even be able to go defensive spores playing this onto one of our units with a high base power that's been damaged down we've got double witch apprentice in this deck sabbath at the end of your turn boost self by two this card can contribute towards sabbath can so when you play this and it gives you 25 or more points it will start working as well keep that in mind as far as the bronzes go we kind of wish to play one of each copy round one except for the lesser witch as i said and we're doing that to set up necromancer's to tome later on in the match okay so then when one of these cards is in deck um in graveyard part of me and we have necromancer's tome on the board when we play that copy again it's drawing it out from the graveyard to the board that's why we want to sequence our play that way so we'll also play one gan round one with gan deploy increase this unit's base power by two for each adjacent relic so we're stacking it in between our relic units has really good synergy with self eater self eater makes this card really consistent most of the time play one round one save the other for necromancer's tome we've got double incubus incubus i believe is best played round three for our deck because we want to bleed into round two of necromancer's tome replay our bronzes from graveyard that way and then for round three incubus can once again replay more bronze cards of our choice so on deploy summon a bronze unit from your opponent's graveyard to the opposite row then summon a bronze unit of equal or less provisions from your graveyard to this row and just bear in mind we have a row stack emphasis because we are playing some cards with sabbath condition and we're playing trist media shower as well so as far as the best targets for incubus it's it's going to be dependent on what cards the opponent has in their graveyard as far as what we can pull back self eater is usually the best possible choice we could go for though uh, so with self eater self eater is one of our proactive plays a card that we play into rounds first because of its ability order half this unit's base power then spawn a copy with the same base power on this row whenever we play a relic increase this unit's base power by one so round one we open up with self eater give it stratagem into round two we can play self eater in combination with necromancer's tome bring another self eater back then moving on we have the crones here we've got all of the crones in this deck weavers deploy boost an allied unit by two increase this boost by two whenever you play a crone the crones feel kind of flexible to play in this deck i think we can use them as we need to it would be good to save either weavers or wispers for round two or three though so with the brewers zeal order consume an allied unit that's going to be archie spore as i explained at the beginning of this guide so save archie spore in combination with brewers round one increase the number of charges by one whenever we play a crone next crone is wispess deploy damage an enemy by two increase this damage by two whenever you play a crone so wispess adds to the control options that we have in this deck base best save for round two or three i believe then we've got rat catchers works similar kind of like self eater does whenever this unit is damaged reduce its base power by one sabbath cancel the above ability and whenever we play a relic increase this unit's base power by one so that's the similarity between self eater and this card i'd suggest we save rat catchers perhaps round two and then we can use she who knows to give rat catchers carryover into round three i think that's the best way to play it toad prince for control Deploy is melee row locked. Consume a unit with four or less power. Use it as you need. Necromancer's Tome. So with this relics list, you know, we're experimenting to see how this artifact performs with relics. Whenever we play a bronze unit, summon a random copy of it from your graveyard to the same row, giving it doomed. I like to use Necromancer's Tome round two on the bleed to put some good pressure on the opponent. We can play Tome ranged row, leave the melee row open, to set up Trist Media Shower and stack all our relics there. And obviously round one's really important to set up our graveyard for Necromancer's Tome into round two. And then you just search for the other copy of the bronze card that's in your graveyard and you start playing it down, you start bleeding the opponent this way. Royal Decree for consistency. Play a unit from your deck. I went with Royal Decree to ensure in particular that we can play Quacks round one into She Who Knows. What I'd like to say is that to begin with, I actually had a Neuromancy in this deck, 
but I found for some weird reason I kept finding a Neuromancy at the end of the match or mostly round two and it didn't feel good. Otherwise I would have went it with a Neuromancy because it can help us draw Necromancer's Tome and it can help us draw Heat Wave. So it feels good in that sense, but I wasn't finding it. So I went with Royal Decree instead. Uh, we do have Quacks. Deep play melee. Each player summons the highest provision unit from their deck to the melee row. This is just a way to brick your opponent's effective card. We want to play Quacks late round one, if it's possible to do so. And why I say that is because we've got two cards with the same highest provision cost. Triss Media Shower and She Who Knows. So do not play Quacks at all unless we have Triss in our hand so we know that we're thinning out She Who Knows. We have to play it that way. Otherwise, we're risking bricking Triss, which is terrible. So play Quacks at the right moment. He wait for control. Banish a unit or an artifact. You can target scenario cards. Use this as a tall punish option at the end of the match. Triss Media Shower. Great tempo play. We look to play this range row, boost all allied units in a row by half their base power. We can play Triss round two to try to 2 the opponent or put some great pressure on them. And we want to play Triss as kind of a final move, closing out one of the rounds that we're committing her into. And then to finish, we've got She Who Knows. She Who Knows has got the Sabbath condition. At the end of round, give resilience to the highest base power unit on your side of the battlefield. Round one, we want to get her out on the board give, to give herself resilience. And then round two, we can play Rat Catcheress and try to give Rat Catcheress resilience into the third through She Who Knows as well. So now that I've covered the list, let me explain how to execute strategy for this deck. Really what we want to do with this deck, because it's so high tempo in its nature, we just want to push hard to win round one and try to 2-0 the opponent. If not, drag the match into a short round three because we're not really a control heavy deck. Over a long round against control decks, we we'll most likely get picked off and destroyed. So cards you can utilize to win round one can be a combination of one Self Eater, one Gan, one Witch Apprentice, Archie Spore in combination with Brewess. We could play Toad Prince for some control. Let's say at the end of that sequencing, we can play Quacks, bringing out She Who Knows, get round control. Into round two, what we can do is you could play Rat Catchers on the same row as She Who Knows play Necromancer's Tome, and then you just start playing out your other bronze cards and then bringing out the same copies from your graveyard. And just do your best to 2 the opponent. You could use Leader in round two to make Triss Media Shower play for greater, greater value and just play everything out, try to 2 them. If not, if it doesn't go that way, in a short round three, just utilize Incubus to bring back some good bronze units such as Self Eater, perhaps even Gan. And we've always got Heat Wave as a final say to consider as well. So I hope you have fun watching the following matches and thanks a lot for your time and support. Maybe they bring out my She Who Knows if they play Quacks. Is there even a point to play that here? Gotta play something. <clears throat> Another one? Yeah, it is. Uh... Hmm. I was expecting it again. DJ Kellett. <laughs> yeah, we're going to lose on even for sure after that. <laughs> At least we got scenario out there.
Probably is, yeah. With um Koshi and all that. Neckers. We have these in there. So self-eater can come back. Witch apprentice if I play this. They're really great engines in Relic decks, aren't they? They're roast stacking as well. Why are they doing that? So clean. Wow. I like it. Hmm. That's why. Quick, yep. Wow, popping off, man. Engines. Oh, yes. Yes! <laughs> good! So good! You tell me they can't current through that? Nice! The bleed backfired, man. That's massive. <clears throat> so six. Cat. Something else. Um. Got one of the crones. Do we give them back a Thrive unit? We get selfie if we do that. What's that at? That's at four. This is at four. This is at five. Mm. Okay, let's see. It's just one. Should we leave it and not click it? So Triss gets better there? 
And I, I need some space for some things anyway. I'm going to play Toad Melee as well. This will consume. Cat. Do we get a target for Toad? This is gonna be it, whatever this is. It's just Karanthi. Hmm. Had a similar kind of idea to us playing Tome as well. Right. This is going to be a big swing. Seventeen's the tallest. Okay. Last card. Nice. That's a great win.
Yep. So in this case, we can quax round one. Uh, but like that could pull Burris Ritual for them if they're doing that kind of a thing. So... Or maybe they do that to me. And they bring out she who knows for me. Okay, they played it already. Gotta hand it to you. Good work. Ah, use my utmost gratitude. Thanks. Yeah, it's a lot of tempo, isn't it? Killing a buyer could be a good idea if we can reach it now. It's probably going to get activated, right? They probably consume something. No, they don't. We can kill that. This way. Consume. Maybe we leave that there for Rot Fiend. Thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Nice, good to hear, Kev. Nice to see you today, my friend. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Low value Manticore. Uh, we could quax now if we want. Pass on even. They've got some good tempo. They've gone full leader here. Let's see what we pull. Maybe Detlof, um High Vampire? Oh, that's so good. Absolutely amazing, friends. Such a good pull. That is huge. So they can't duplicate Detloff. I'm sure that's what they have it in there for, right? <laughs> They leave she who knows? We're happy about that. So we keep Brazilians. Double treason? Sounds nasty. Did you find it was the card that can find like consistent value or sometimes people can play around it huh maybe match dependent I'm really surprised they didn't take our shoe nose they gave me advantage here now what's the decree for wait we want to find Oh, all these cards are good, really. I pull another one? Maybe it's a sign I shouldn't click again. <laughs> uh, maybe
Maybe it's a sign to keep it, man. Oh, you're probably just looking to pass, aren't you? Double bribery. Yeah. That's a sick card, man. Bribery's mad. There we go. She who knows for third round. Unless they heat wave or something. Maybe they have a card like that. Yeah, he was pretty interesting. But he works pretty good now with the siege engines. He's also not that bad. They pass now, right? Assimilate synergy, yeah, true, true. I I didn't play him like that myself for the assimilate synergy, but it's good. Uh, to the uh, give resistance to the highest base power unit, base power. Why are they making this all good? <laughs> what are they doing, man? I'm close to it. <laughs> Trust me, I was close. Okay. Sure. Their death wish, maybe this isn't good. Okay. Well, should we just stack range then with Triss? Since this is here. Maybe we do that. They got another one in there? No 
worries. Sins of the flesh are my speciality. They're surprising you, keen creatures. If it happens. That's actually really good value now. Look at that. Foglet? Back there. Rock fiends. Uh, interesting. Instant activation through this. We can save this here. Okay. Wow. It's that 15. Seven for fifteen. Engine. Okay, they got it. Oh, that's crazy. Those points are crazy. Oh, my God. And still seventy three to forty six. Okay. The thing is, friends, we have to be careful of Quacks because I got Triss in this deck as well. Unless Triss is in hand, we can't um quack quack. You know what I mean? <laughs> Rage quitting, yeah. Yeah, what's up, Nate? Yeah, I just started. Uh, we had a forfeit just then. Because I pulled someone's um, Harold the Cripple, Skelliger player. So far, so good. Well, we do have Brewers here. We may need Decree to find Triss. Okay, let's have a look. <laughs> Thanks, gang. Muay Thai legend. Gang TV. Wow. <laughs> so good to see everyone here that's great so hopefully we draw into Triss next round Got 
Well, I mean, we're going to keep pushing, don't we? Let's play this first. And we'll go into this. We should really try to 2-0 this deck. <laughs> Kiki, do you love me? <laughs> How fun was that uh that stream, man? Wow, it was really interesting playing that combo. Yeah, still playing on. We can deny the bloodthirst. Yeah, uh, maybe they'll jump on those and I don't know. Haven't seen them. Thirty-eight to fifteen looks good. Okay, we'll go around control. Okay, let's get lucky now. Let us draw a Triss. Yes! <laughs> oh my god, dude. That's honestly insane. Decree. Decree. Guys, that's got to be magic, right? Yo, what's up, Golia? Lemon's here. That's fantastic. Nice to see you all. Lemon, we're, we're playing your favorite card, Triss. What's really an effective play um, for Decree here? What about like Incubus into Self Eater? What do you think about that? Do they have, um, they just got a four and a five. Okay. It might be for Witch Apprentice actually. Let's see. Probably not the best giving him a unit that can damage, but... I'm trying to put some pressure on. Give us extra units for Triss. Yeah, what's up, Sonriza? Is it Lemon's birthday? Huh? Is it really? Deny the bloodthirst, get rid of this.
Not bad. Yeah, happy birthday, Lemon. <laughs> yeah, Mokfark's pretty good. What's up, everyone? So, what do we got left? It's like Tome... Tome to fall back on. Uh, they're generating bloodthirst for something. They might kill this, yeah. Worth this here? Still good points. Maybe we pass now. This has got a really good interaction with Tome. It plays for 10 points straight up if you got Tome on the board. 4 for 10. It's actually really good. Thank you for the gifted sub, Ash. That's so kind of you. Yes, everyone. Wish Lemon a happy birthday. Skewardle? Okay. And get out of the round. They just make it. So we're looking for Necromancer's Tome now. Well, these cards ain't, ain't bad either. Um, we may just get deleted though, because we're versing Skelliger here with the raids. Crap. Oh, that's pretty bad for them too. <sighs> Probably just gets deleted. It's a tough matchup, isn't it? If we don't 2 them, it's difficult. Yeah. Not surprised. <laughs> Not really surprised, to be honest. Okay, so what have they played? Brands out. This is out. Maybe we'll save Heat Wave for the leader. Yeah, they're really strong, Dozen. Sup, Fox, how are you? Yeah, yeah, true, true. Three Bloodthirst. Here it comes. What's their slash doing? Seven. <laughs> oh, crap, man. Or should we play this while we have the value? I think this is always getting destroyed. Just use it. Yeah. Would have died. Great. 
great deck. It's so good. It's really good, this deck. No chance. Nah. Thanks so much for the tier one sub. Really appreciate it, friends. Glad you're here with us.